Number one. I lift the curtains up and I look out through my bedroom's window. It's raining again today. In a way, I can tell that it's quite good to see rain again after years of absence. Earth today is no longer like it used to be. Earth supposed to be blue and green, trees and water. But, just as we do, the earth is also growing old. The waters run dry, trees dead, while humans breed every day. We will have no food to eat in a short time. So 20 years ago, the government started developing a project they called the Olympus Project. A project to create floating islands above our dying Earth. Earth's water and soil are no longer renewable, so the government started research to create synthetic soils and water. Since the actual Earth's soil was dead, the government wouldn't be able to install the synthetic ones on Earth, hence the creation of the floating island. It floats only 3,000 metres above the Earth, for one reason. The ability to float higher means higher cost and longer research time, which we don't have. Five years ago, the Olympus project was done and people of the Earth were invited to move there. The project cost a huge amount of money, so as you can guess, moving up there wasn't free. It's not even cheap, but we have less chance to survive if we're on the ground. So people did whatever they could to pay their way to move to Olympus. It's not a problem for rich people, for the poor, they sold their kidneys, or anything worth selling, to buy the citizenship on the Olympus. Sadly, for me and my family, we didn't have any good body parts worth to be sold. So here we are, staying on the ground, waiting to deteriorate along with the earth. We regretted our poorness, until a few weeks ago, Creating floating islands under the Earth's atmosphere is risky because the government needed to calculate the impact of the gravitation to the island. And it seems like they did miscalculate it. One of the islands started to break weeks ago. People needed to evacuate. There were rescue pods, of course, but not the same number as the people in the colonies. So, as you can guess, the rescue pods were only available to those who could pay again. Yes, I hate capitalists. This morning, another colony of floating islands broke. It started to scatter. The rescue pods were already sold out. So what was waiting for the rest of the people left in the colony? They could only wait for the floating island to break completely and fall to the earth. When the island breaks and falls, all the people who lived there also fall down. Thousands of them. From my bedroom window, the scene of those thousands of people falling from the floating island to the earth looks like rain. So, like I said, it's raining again today. Not cats and dogs, humans. Number two. You crawl into bed at around nine. Funny, that's a little early for you, but you don't seem to care. You toss and turn for a few minutes, before you feel it. Somebody's watching you, you're sure of it. You scan the room, finding nothing. But you still feel uneasy. You lay back down, 
facing the room. You shut your eyes and try to sleep, but you can't. You still feel the eyes on you, watching you. You pull the covers over your head and the feeling fades. You relax and close your eyes, but as soon as they shut, the feeling returns. You're scared to move the covers to search for the eyes that you know are watching you. You're terrified, but you yank the covers down. And as you do, your heart skips a beat. You scan the room, seeing absolutely nothing yet again. The feeling disappears and you scold yourself for acting like a child. You roll over towards the wall and quickly go to sleep. But let me ask you this. Do you know how many hiding spots there are in your room? I do. Hundreds. Number three. I suppose I should start by saying that yes, I indeed murdered Ronald Randall. All those horrible things you saw on the news were done by my own hand. I will spare you the grislier details. No doubt you've probably heard about it from the media like everyone else. People ask me why I killed Ronald, my best friend and most trusted companion. I'm afraid I must answer their question with a question. Before his death, had anyone ever heard of him? Or about his writings? I'm not surprised if the answer was no. He was a great author with inspiration that could only have come from the muses themselves. His novels should have been recommended reading for any bibliophile. But like many great men, his masterpieces were passed over for the horrible writing and cheap titillation pushed out to the lowest common denominator of mankind. I saw the crushing despair on his face as time and again his greatest works were ignored in favour of bodice rippers and vampire paramours and whatever literary trends the powers wanted to push out that month. So, when he confided in me that he was at his wit's end about it, I promised I would do whatever it took to make his works known. We utilised all possible means of promoting his work, tried every method known to both of us. I even invested a significant amount of money into the ordeal. But no matter what we did, his works remained overlooked by all. Ronald's brilliance ignored for the same vapid and trite storytelling. After seeing what the continuous soul-crushing rejections were doing to Ronald, I could bear it no further. I was willing to do anything to alleviate my best friend of his despair, no matter how dark and foul the deed would be. So, that night, I butchered him in his sleep. I did things to him that in any other light I would be horrified to even contemplate. But for Ronald, it was worth the dark stain on my soul. The press did what I expected them to. They ate every bit of it up and sensationalised the murder to the masses. And due to all the infamy and scandal the crime attracted, people started to read his books for themselves. And just like when I had read them, they recognised the absolute genius that had gone unnoticed before. It wasn't long before his past works became best-sellers. The cultural elite 
sing his praises from their ivory towers. The critics pour over his works, wondering how they hadn't noticed such beautiful storytelling before he died. Publishers were fighting each other to gain the right to publish his last tale, finished only two days before his demise. In death, Ronald Randall was finally getting the recognition and praise he truly deserved. I had fulfilled the promise I had made to him, and all it had cost was his life and my soul. Hello everyone, Sinister Shaf here. I hope you enjoyed this short collection of scary stories from Reddit. I would like to say a huge thank you to the authors of these stories. Paranoid Letters for the story In the Absence of Rain. Spooky for the story Hundreds. And James Marie Parker III for the story the recognition he deserved. Thank you for giving me permission to narrate your stories, I really appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, leave me a comment down below telling me which one of these stories was your favourite. And, as always, stay sinister.